Hello and welcome back. Um, we're getting pretty close to the end of this series. I think in this video I'm just going to go through a list of things I have to touch up just to give the game a little bit more of a consistent feel. So the first thing I want to do is mess with the start menu. Um, these don't really fit in with the background or the, the enemy. So I think I'm, I'm going to move these over and I don't really have a, an exact plan going into this but I just want to try to make it look better. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is click on these and add the font that we got for the previous video. Uh, dead font. And let's make that red. And then m maybe we can make the backgrounds like slightly transparent or something. Uh, to do that, you can click on this alpha channel. How does that look? I, I don't like it with the buttons completely washed out because you almost can't see them. Maybe if I do like half visible and then a darker color. I feel like we're on the right track. Maybe I can move them down. No. They almost look too cartoony. I kind of like the way that looks. Um, if we're going to put them in the bottom left corner, let's make sure we anchor them in that direction. That way, as the screen gets resized, they won't like fall off the screen on the bottom or something. That's not bad. I think I'm just going to pull them up this way a little bit more, and then... Um, I don't know. Almost done with these. Um, another thing you can do with colors is pull from the scene. So you can click on this little um, pick a color button. And then like you could choose the color from the trees or from Axon's head. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, I like the way that looks better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that color and save it to this palette. And then save the scene and then go into the next scene. And I'm going to apply that color here too. Canvas. I'm just going to select all of these, click on color, and click on the one we just added. And I'm going to uh, make those much smaller. Let's try 40. Yeah, that, that's better. And then I'm going to take score and score value and move those up. Yeah, I think that looks much better. Okay. Um, I also think that I should increase the gun volume. So to do that, we can find the gun and select its audio source and just pull that up. I had it at 1, 0.19. Uh, I'll probably put it at 0.4. And I want to drop the footstep volume because the when he's when he walks around, uh, I I don't know if you can hear that through my microphone, um, but it's it's sort of like a clacky 
like high heels on dance floor type clicking. So we're just going to bring that way down to like 0.3. All right, and I want to bring up the volume on the overs. Uh, bring that up to like 0.8. It should. I want it to be pretty prominent and kind of terrifying. Um, I also think I should make the bullets move much faster. Uh, so if you click on gun. We have bullet force. We can just like more than double that. See what happens. That's a little bit better. And wh while I'm at it, I'm gonna make the gun bounce around a little bit when it shoots. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna put it on a, on a placeholder object, like so. And I'll call this gun placeholder. Now I'm going to open up the gun script. And we're just going to create a method called uh, recoil. And actually, um, I was going to move it around with code. But now I'm thinking maybe we should just use an animator. Nah, that's too much work. Let's just let's just use code. So every time the bullet, or every time the gun fires, we're just gonna call this recoil function. And within that, we're just gonna move the gun backward, and then it's gonna start sliding forward to where it was before. So let's give this a reference to gun placeholder, public game object, gun placeholder um, save the script and then go back to unity uh, after it compiles click on sci-fi rifle and just drag the gun placeholder onto gun placeholder now go back to your code and now that, now that we have a reference to this um, let's also create another method called um, what should I call this? Um, return to center. Okay, so every time the gun fires, the gun is just going to slide back a ways. And then we want it to return to the place they were originally holding it at. So for that, we're going to use this return to center function. And that's just going to happen once per frame. Uh, for the recoil, Let's just say transform dot position equals transform dot position uh, plus transform dot forward times slide amount. Um, I'm going to put these in parentheses, and I'm going to create a public float called slide amount. Public float slide amount. And to start off, we can make that 0.5. And it's a it's a float, so we put an F on the end. And I want this to be a negative number, so that it actually moves backward from its position when it shoots. So we're just going to multiply this by a negative 1. We could also just use a minus here, but I, I prefer the negative 1 because it, it's a little bit more explicit. And then for the return to center function, we can just say transform dot translate. Actually, why don't we just say transform dot position equals v3 dot move towards uh, current position. And then uh, we want to move towards gun placeholder dot transform dot position. And the amount that we should slide is slide amount, whoops, slide amount over 
let's just try 10. And we, we might have to play with that number. Uh, why, don't, why don't we actually make a second variable? We can have a slide amount and a weak oil amount. So slide amount should be pretty small. Uh, let's give that three. And then the weak oil amount, that's how much we'll jump back when we shoot the bullet. Okay, so just having two variables is going to give us a little bit more control. So click on sci-fi rifle. Um, I don't see our new variables yet. Oh, that's there's a compilation error. Double click on that. Line 24. If input, get mouse button. Oh, okay. So the reason that happened is because I forgot a semicolon here. Save that again. There was no compilation errors. Go into play mode. And now the gun is very aggressively bouncing around. So let's uh, bring those values down by quite a bit. Slide amount. Uh, for the weak oil amount, I'm just going to change that to like 0.2. And then for the slide amount, I just realized we need to multiply that by the frame rate. Or more specifically, the time that it took to render the last frame. Time dot delta time. Okay, so now now it's sliding backward. Like it, we need to Im increase the speed that it slides forward. Um, but I like that it's smoothly sliding at least. So slide amount should be more like point point eight. And let's change weak oil amount to something smaller. Uh, point zero 0.09. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm very happy with that. So one more thing we're going to do in this video is adding a few more enemies. So go ahead and click on Axon, Control-D to duplicate, and then just uh, move them around the map. We can put one there, one there, um, one all the way out here. And in the next video, I'm either going to add more to the map to box in the player, or I'm also considering um, using the built-in nav mesh to have the monster correctly navigate around trees and rocks. Um, I would like to cover both of those things in future videos, though, so stay tuned. There's lots more interesting stuff to come. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night.